This video is sponsored by PotownStore.com, the place for all your Pokemon TCG online needs. Looking for some Rebel Clash boosters? No problem, they got your back and deliver the codes instantly. So definitely check them out at PotownStore.com and use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5% of your next order. Also, if you're from Europe, be sure to check out CardMarket.com. This is the best place for you to get physical cards. You can buy cards from people all across Europe as well as sell cards yourself. It's the best platform for buying and selling physical cards in Europe and I personally use it every single day So be sure to check out the website if you haven't already cardmarket.com Have you heard about Dark as a place? The upcoming set that has cards so great that people just can't hardly wait you archetypes tier one dax is fate it turned out that it's obvious we're playing it is marvelous the bank is still so wondrous we're wrecking them victorious yes what i want to say play combat it's okay reminds me of the day of shaman in the way or how about item lock the viking vote will block your settlement will suck so let's talk about some more cards in this video yeah what up the top 20 best cards from darkness of blaze coming up What's up YouTube, it's ZadoisTCG here and welcome back to episode 247 on my channel. First of all, for the people that haven't subscribed yet and are watching this video, be sure to subscribe because you're gonna get all the competitive TCG information in town. And also, if you enjoy the content, be sure to mouse the like button as always and click that little notification bell. You'll definitely help me out in the long run because you're gonna get the best content available. So, uh, I actually made a list of the top 20 best cards of the Darkness Ablaze set. Darkness Ablaze comes out uh, mid-August, so that's gonna be very exciting for us to uh, be playing with new archetypes, new decks, and there's a whole heap of cards that will be good. Also, a little disclaimer, we still don't know what Mew V will do, so if Mew is V is very broken and busted, it will also be, of course, uh, included in a list like this, but for now, Mew V is a mystery, and uh, I'd love to keep it that way to get the content to you guys very, very early. It's just June, and we're getting this uh, top 20 list already. We even have translated scans available so that's gonna be fantastic so first of all some honorable mentions we have uh, Arctozolt is a new uh, fossil Pokemon if you uh, have this on the field uh, if the opponent attaches an energy they put two damage counters onto themselves so that means if you get a couple of these out this will stack very nicely it also is uh, very nice if the opponent relies on welder for say let's say they welder two energies well it stacks so for every Ar Ar Arctozolt or uh, whatever it's pronounced they get two damage counters and you can even uh, of course use the Galarian Cursor Law as well, but I didn't include it in here because it's a little bit tricky. Those rare fossils are also very hard to get out, so uh, maybe it will see some success here and there, so that's something you'll honorable mention. Galisopod has the uh, Adversity Slash, being able to slash 30 damage for Twin Energy. And uh, 50 more for every uh, GX or V Pokemon that the opponent has in play. Let's say a Picaron player. Like a Dedane, a Picaram, uh, I won't write you to it. So it stacks very, very crazy like that. So uh, Glycepot might be a good one prize attacking uh, machine for just a twin energy. We have the Big Parasol. Uh, it is a very nice tool card. And if it's equipped to one of your Pokemon, it prevents all effects of, effect, uh, of attacks uh, except for the damage done to all of your Pokemon. So let's say Dracapult VMAX tries to use some Max Phantom action. Well, don't worry about it. If you have the Big Parasol, you protect your bench from that effect. So they only smack 130 then with Max Phantom. Them. So uh, it's gonna be seeing some nice uses uh, just like we've seen before with Stealthy Hood. So it's here in the honorable mention. Then Charizard V Max, probably gonna be the most expensive card from Darkness of Blaze. It's not included because 300 is not the damage it used to be. So lots of V Maxes have more than 300 HP, and you need five energies to do that. The first turn supporter rule with Welder also is not uh, treating this card very well. So 300. There are better ways to do that. You can even do that with a two prizer in the form of like heat range jacks. I know this guard has a huge amount of HP and you could keep using Mellow Lano to keep it alive and all that. But I'm not sure too sure. 300 damage. If you if it would have been like 350 damage, I would have said yes. Just play this card, use Welder twice on it, and uh, uh, just start one shotting. But that's not the case. So uh, next up is Handum V. 
The uh, Compensation Flame is pretty nice. Uh, for just a Welder and attachment of the turn, we have 100 damage. And if any of the uh, yeah Fire Pokemon you have, any damage counters on them, you smack 200. So the thing you could be using is that new Stadium card, which we're going to talk about. If we switch to the bench, you get damage. That could be an option to get Houndoom uh, rolling in no time. 200 for 3 energy is actually very good. Still put it in the Honorable Mentions because I'm not sure if it's the best Fire-type attacker in town. And then we have Dreadnought VMAX, a huge G-Max Pokemon here. And uh, it has the ability Hard Shell. Uh, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. So that is uh, on its own very tanky. It has 320 HP. So the opponent will have to slap 350 damage onto it in order to one shot. It also has an attack uh, G Max Stone Surge. 160 damage. And then flip a coin if heads. You smack 80 additional damage. That 80 additional damage is good because you get uh, the number 240, which is enough to like uh, one shot. Uh, certain V Pokemon, like most of them, if they are don't have V Maxes, that's gonna be good. But also, uh, if you use the new Stadium card, you make sure that this coin flip goes your way like 75% uh, uh, of the time. So that could be nice. Also, if the opponent uses something like Melolana, they have like 240 damage onto them, they get reduced to 120 and then you smack 240 again. So the damage is pretty good to be uh, honest, but I don't know if it's gonna be the best V Max in town. Also, having the Lightning Weakness, I know Picaram will have it rough after rotation with the laws of Electro Power. Thunder Mountain and all that good stuff, Zero Aura as well. Don't know if Lightning will be still the top deck in town, but if it's not, Dreadnought might see some success. Okay, without further ado, let's go with number 20. Okay, let's get the system on the roll. Bam, number 20. For me personally, that's going to be Mimikyu. Mimikyu has the crazy ability here, always having fantastic abilities as we've seen before with Mimikyu's. This time around, it has the ability uh, Heal Stop. Your opponent's bench Pokemon cannot be healed. So what does this mean? Mellow Lana does state uh, that the opponent can switch to the bench and then heal 120 damage. So this blocks the Mellow Lana completely. They could switch, but the healing effect doesn't come true. So this blocks Mellow Lana. This is going to be a fantastic tech card if you're still playing Dracopult VMAX, if you're not afraid of the darkness, although you should be afraid of the darkness, it's coming. Uh, yeah, if you're still playing Dracopult, definitely include a Mimikyu, you'll have an awesome time. No, nobody's going to be able to play Mellow Lana anymore to ruin your day. So no healing allowed. That's awesome. Also another side effect is like some attacks like Miraculous Duo GX heals all of the Pokemon. Well, uh, sorry Mewtwo, it's only going to be healing yourself because uh, Mimikyu blocks everything that uh, the opponent wants to heal from the bench. So number 20 spot here. Next up, number 19, the Glimwood Tangle. Yeah, uh, we do see here that uh, once during either player's turn, uh, you can flip a coin and uh, yeah, if you flip coins for an attack, you may ignore all results and flip, uh, begin flipping those coins again. So I have put a couple of uh, things on the screen right here and that's going to be the exact same effect like a Victini of the days back in Guardians Rising, I think, Victory Star, who remembers that? So even Noble Victories are going way back. So we have Toxtricity here, uh, it's a new card with Twin Energy, new card from uh, Darkness of Blades, we can use Twin Energy on it, flip a coin of heads, Discard the top 5 cards of the opponent's deck. Ooh, nasty. But uh, if it stales, you discard the top 5 cards of your deck. So, in combination with Lieutenant Surge, in combination with Belalba and Bryson Man, and using this attack while the Stadium card Glamwood Tangle is up, you're gonna be discarding so much cards. Imagine. Just get this out, you can evolve it the next turn, and the twin energy is all you need. We have twin energies, we can even use triple accelerated energy if need be, because Toxtricity will pro presumably go down anyhow. And then uh, just get the stadium card in play and you have a 75% chance of getting a heads. So that is actually uh, not too bad, and uh, discarding 5 cards with uh, Belalba and Bryson Man combo and all that, you'll be milling way quicker than ever before. I don't know if it's the preferred mill variant, but it's still something I want to try out with Glimwood Tangle. Also Kartana here, the Kartana, I think it's from Unbroken Bonds, flip a coin of heads, put uh, damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until its remaining HP is 10. Oh boy, yeah, remaining HP is 10, as you can see. So. That means if you combine this uh, with, of course, Glimmel Tangle, you have a 75% chance to, of putting the opponent Gigantamax, whatever, VMAX, to only 10 HP. Then next turn, you can just simply use a, a Galarian Zigzagoon to finish the job and do it all over again. This will require energy acceleration. I know we are losing, of course, the crazy, crazy good, uh, what was it, B-String. But we can also set this up with a Twin Energy and an Attach of the turn. So in two turns, you can set this up or you can use Rillaboom to accelerate the Grass Energy. So... Yeah, Glimmu Tangle will put some life on those coin flippy attacks, which is something I do enjoy. So here is number 18. That's going to be Galarian Stunfisk V. Also, um, figuring this out, we uh, definitely need to put our uh, crazy sponsor uh, back. So let's go. Um, I think I will just include it right here. 
uh, of course, card market, definitely the side you need to go to. So let's go to the media source. And uh, let's add, of course, the uh, Po Town store. Let's see if I can uh, find it correctly here. Adding images. Yeah, Po Town store uh, and, uh, of course, the uh, card market are both my sponsors. So uh, they need to be both on the screen. So we're doing it live because why the hell not? So uh, I'm actually going to be putting card market on top here like this like that okay card market on top why not we already have our zapdos and of course that uh, po town store logo right there so it's very nice to be sponsored by all of these fantastic fantastic uh, people out there so uh while we're at it so we have the galarian stunt fisk here with of course the crazy ability metal skin the pokemon's maximum hp gets increased for 20 for every metal energy attached to it so in theory, you could have an infinite amount of HP if you get more energies onto Galarian Stunfisk. And it also comes packed with, of course, the Trap Bite. Uh, you smack 60 damage for uh, yeah, two Carlos energies. You can use Metal Saucer for that in one go. And if this Pokemon is damaged by an attack during your opponent's next turn, put 12 damage counters on that Pokemon. So it reminds me of uh, Shell Trap of the Turtonator GX. Who remembers those days? But way more crazy. So um, what I can say about this is that you can use, of course... The uh, giant bomb eater, if the opponent smacks 180 damage or more, they get 10 damage. In combination with that trap bite, we'll put two, uh, 22 damage counters on that Pokemon. That is hilarious. I'm also, uh, now that I think about it, I'm actually going to move the Potown Star logo over here. So we, we can actually read all the cards. Yeah, we're still at number 18, so let's do it like that. Okay, Potown Star, you just got to work with it. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, that means this Zapdos is flying away like this. <laughs> they're out, they're out. Okay, so we have the sponsors on the screen right here. I know it's uh, looking a little bit messy, but uh, just bear with me, guys. Now you can read the entire card, which will probably be better as mentioned. So, we can use Metal Goggles to uh, make sure that the opponent can use some not, uh, yeah, ability effects like Galarian Zigzagoon, for instance. But also, uh, reducing damage done to us by 30 is very nice. So, you can even use Metal Goggles or use Giant Bomb and use Metal Saucer and just be sitting there with a huge amount of HP. They will have to hit into you eventually. So, even though 60 damage might not seem like a lot, if they smack into you, they get 12 damage counters. I know Boss's Orders is around, they can gust around it. They can even use something like Fiona or whatever, but if this is your only Pokemon in the active position, they will have to hit it, for sure. Maybe you play this with some sort of a healing option, who knows? It uh, has some potential putting it here at the number 18 spot. And also, the reason why it's not higher up on the list, even though it has so much potential, is the fire weakness. We're losing Metal Frying Pan and uh, being weak to fire Pokemon with Baby Blossophilon running around, with of course the new Scourge VMAX being very good, that uh, causes me a little bit of a headache. So. That's why we're putting it at number 18. Moving forward, uh, here is going to be Hoopa. Hoopa is very nice. It smacks 90 damage, uh, but uh, it only smacks that amount of damage if you come from the bench. Otherwise, you smack zero damage or you cannot even use the attack. So what you have to do is here, just do like Zapdos, come from the bench, slide your way uh, to the active position and smack 90 damage. So the damage I put is higher than Zapdos, which is great. Uh, with some Galarian Zigzagoons, you can actually get some huge damage, to be honest. Let's say... Um, Galarian Zigzagoon and two scoop up nets will already get you a one hit KO on Baby Blacephalon for instance so this will be a one of inclusion in the darkness decks because you can go after Jirachi's early game put up some pressure to get a one hit KO afterwards and uh, just set up the damage it's very nice with height darkness energy you can even circle between Hoopas which could be an option here so uh, Hoopa 17 slot right here yeah, talking about the high darkness energy if you have this attached to one of your darkness Pokemon the retreat cost becomes zero and uh, be having zero retreat cost in a TCG is always very good. We've seen this before with Dark City, even though that only works for basic darkness Pokemon. We have Dark Ryax back in the days of Dark Explorers providing free retreat, and that actually dominated the World Championships two years in a row. And then uh, Eternus VMAX, probably one of the best cards in the set. We'll talk about it more briefly very shortly. And uh, it's going to be, of course, a, a, ten a con top contender for the best deck in the format. So having that high energy to provide free retreat, make sure you can have that energy attachment of the turn and uh, you can cut down on maybe a couple of your switches because you're not running a Jirachi engine in the darkness deck. Also, I should mention that the, the more special energies get released, the better the Giratina Dimension Breach becomes. So that is always something to uh, take a look at. Okay, 
Here we have Pierce, also a supporter. Reminds me a little bit of Volkner in the, in the way. You can search your deck for one Darkness Pokemon and then one Energy. So instead of like searching for an item and an Energy, it, this time around it states an Energy. So that could also mean Special Energy. So you can get your uh, one-off Special Energy out of the deck instantly with this. Or even better, you can just play it in the Darkness deck to get your Crobat, get your uh, high Darkness Energy if you want to get out of the active position. Because believe it or not, Eternatus VMAX does have a 3 retreat cost. So uh, that's a little bit clunky. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I move to the side, move to the side. Uh, yeah, there you can see it. A 3 retreat cost. <laughs> yeah, 3 retreat cost is huge. So getting that out of the active position might sometimes be necessary if it's almost knocked out and you don't have any energies. Let's say you're up against like an Energy Denial Crushing Hammer deck. Yeah, it could be the case that it's stuck in the active, so you can use high darkness energy, per, uh, yeah, retreat it to the bench, uh, sacrifice something, and then attack with it once again. So a very, very nice way to search out your special energy, your regular energy, and the darkness Pokemon. And seeing as uh, Crobat V is probably, if not the best card in the set, uh, as you will see in this video, it's not a secret, so uh, you guys shouldn't be uh, spoiled already. So Crobat V, very good. You can search it out. You can search out your Eternatus V Max puzzle piece. You can search out Galarian Zigzagoon if need be, your early game Hoopa. It all depends, so appears uh, very good. Next up, powerful Carless Energy. Reminds me so much of strong energy back in the days. I put up some uh, Pokemon on the screen right here that uh, do think that can re uh, very, very much appreciate this powerful Carless Energy. It just works like strong energy, but uh, only for Carless Pokemon. You smack an additional uh, 20 damage. So it provides uh, Carless Pokemon, and uh, the translation did not go correctly, but you do smack an additional 20 damage. Uh, with this energy. So that means the uh, Salamence, which we'll talk about later down in the video, smacks more damage. Dub Wool can have his Revenge Blast even buffed up even further. And Snorlax VMAX finally gets the numbers it wants to one-shot something like a Zacian, for instance. So powerful Carlos energy will see play. Another special energy here is Heat Fire energy. I think this is one of the better ones because it pairs so well with Santa Scorch VMAX, which we're also going to talk about later in this video. If that buffs your HP by 20, for your fire type, so uh, your Charizard, let's say uh, Reshizard here, can, could have 290 HP if you just attach it. If you attach more, you have more HP. And because this card has the Outrage attack, that's why I'm putting it on the screen. You have so many combos with this fire energy, but more importantly, this will help out Santi Scorch VMAX a lot. And we're going to talk about that very shortly. Next up, number 12 is uh, Vikavolt V. Vikavolt V reminds us of Seismitoad EX back in the days of Furious Fist and that actually took over the format even still in the expanded format. Very good. It provides us with item lock, paralyzing bolt, smacking 50 damage and your opponent can't play any item cards during their next turn. If you go second, I know Thunder Mountain is rotating, that is, uh, otherwise this card would be busted. You could use green, find your Thunder Mountain and energy and all that, but now we're gonna have to rely on Tapu Koko Prism Star and energy switches to get this going, which is not the hardest task in the world. You could be running four energy switches, you could be running uh, four Quick Ball, maybe Great Ball, whatever. Finding your Tapu Koko Prism Star, using the uh, Dance of the Ancients, maybe playing a Jirachi Engine so you can switch around, get the energies to Vika Vault. The Speed Lighting Energy does also help with that, but BAM! Item Lock. It's also unfortunate that we're losing Electro Power, but smacking 50 damage and putting the opponent in an Item Lock, definitely in a format where you're uh, not able to play supporters on the first turn, will be huge. This kind of an archetype will always go second and put the opponent in an Item Lock, and uh, if they're in an Item Lock long enough, you can set up and then smack Super Zap Cannon for 190 damage. So. Will it be as impressive as Seismitoad? Seismitoad only dishes out uh, 30 damage, but still has damage modifiers like Verbank, City, and the Hypnotoxic Laser. This time around, we also have some damage modifiers in the form of Galarian Zigzagoon and Scoop Ups and Vitality Band. So we'll see what Vikavolt brings to the format. Next up, L11 spot is gonna be Spike Mod. This is the uh, crazy new stadium card that, uh, if it's in play, if you retreat to the bench, uh, if your active Pokemon retreats to the bench, you put actually two damage counters on that Pokemon. It does state whenever a player's Pokemon is moved from the active spot uh, to the bench during their turn. So you cannot be using Fion, Fion, Fion and damage. No, that's not gonna work. It's during their turn. So if it's, let's say it's our turn, we uh, use Stellar Wish, then we switch, our Jirachi gets two damage counters. This might seem like a horrible scenario, but this will help out Spiritomb builds a lot. I know Spiritomb will, of course, cry, not with the Anguish Cry, but they will lose uh, Rainbow Energy, which is uh, very unfortunate. But you can still use, of course, uh, Spike Mud. Whenever a player is moved from the active spot to the bench, put two damage counters. So you can use a couple of switch and get your Spiritomb uh, ready in no time. Also, there's a new um, uh, tool card that gives uh, basic Pokemon 50 extra HP, which we'll talk about soon. So Spiritomb lists, uh, Spiritomb is looking pretty, pretty damn powerful in uh, the next format. 
Uh, there's also Salamence V Max. Uh, this could help out if you slap this down and you can uh, rely on the spread damage. We'll talk about Salamence V very shortly. This could mean that you can have, of course, the easy access to lots of KOs simultaneously because if this stadium card sticks, I know it's a little bit, the opponent can overlap the stadium, but if they go uh, from the active spot to the bench and uh, yeah, lots of lists will still run Jirachi, then you can prey on those uh, with, of course, the spread damage. Next up, Salamence V. Here you go. So Salamence V is a VMAX Pokemon. It, uh, yeah, Dynamax is from uh, the Salamence V. And the Salamence V has a great attack. The, t uh, the Trans Flight being able to slap 30 damage on every one of the opponent's Pokemon. Remember Flying Flip? Well, it's even better. Yeah, you can use this on one go with Welder and uh, it's going crazy. So you Welder onto your Salamence. Always go second. You use Poke Gears and whatever. Trust me. You have to be afraid of Mew from Broken Bonds, uh, but yeah, if people are not playing Mew and Mew becomes less relevant, this could become a very crazy archetype. You use Welder, two energies onto Salamence, uh, let's say you go second. Powerful uh, Carless Energy as the attach of the turn, additional 20 damage for your Carless types, that means 50 damage on the active and 30 on everything else. So that is very crazy and stacks up very, very well. Then Salamence VMAX for a single Carless Energy, you slap 40 damage to two of the opponent's Pokemon. So it goes even crazier, like 30 on everything, and then uh, Twin Sonic can even get rid of two Jirachis at the same time, or weak Pokemon for that matter. So, And it also has Max Wing during your next turn. You cannot use Max Wing, which doesn't bother us too much since we can switch around. We have a Brazilian Pokemon, which can uh, not attack on the next turn, like let's say Zacian. Just use a couple of switches, you're gonna be good. And this also pairs really well with Triple Accelerator Energy, so that means Powerful Energy, Use some of uh, your Twin Sonic and then next turn triple accelerated energy, bam, and smack a huge amount of damage. Very, very great. Uh, the only reason it's so low is it's still weak to lightning. I don't know how Picaram will develop. People say Picaram is dead, but seeing as we still have Tapu Koko Prism Star, seeing as we still have Speed Lightning Energy, so I don't know. I don't know if Picaram is still dead. The damage output of Picaram gets uh, decreased by a lot, but they're still Bolton. Bolton can go through Salamances like crazy, so. I really don't know. We'll see how the meta develops, but Salamence VMAX is definitely one of my personal favorites from the new set. Moving forward, the Toughness Cape, getting yourself more HP. More HP has always been great in the TCG. Think about, uh, for instance, Expert Belt. Uh, think about, uh, yeah, there's a lot of like these tool cards that uh, provide extra HP. And uh, that does help out with numbers. Uh, let's say yeah, this only works on basic Pokemon, by the way. So you cannot be putting your toughness capes on your Evolution V Max Pokemon. Only for basic Pokemon, and your uh, HP gets increased by 50. Also, excluding Pokemon GX. So they uh, state that on a lot of these cards. So they are actually uh, pushing the GX out of the way and actually uh, may makes us want to play V Pokemon, right? So let's say a Zacian now has 270 HP, just like a tag team, or maybe a Baby Blossephalon has 170 HP. I can think of bazillion ways where uh, having extra HP will matter. Let's say you smack this, uh, yeah, you cannot smack it on your Dedenne, but you can smack it on your Crobat to have more HP so they don't get sniped or whatever. I don't know if there's sniped Pokemon with 180 HP damage output. Who knows, but Toughness Cape will help out with numbers. It will turn a one shot into a two shot, maybe a two shot into a three shot. Uh, I know Tool Scrapper is the huge enemy for this card, but seeing as a uh, buff padding uh, is the exact same effect and uh, is used with Pokemon with four treat costs. Think about Excadrill, for instance. Having a Toughness Cape for basic Pokemon, I know they're still pro yeah, promoting basic Pokemon, is going to be insane. Very similar to Big Charm, but extra 20 HP for basics. Next up is going to be... No, I, you, I, I know what you're gonna say. Like, what, what is this weak Pokemon doing on the screen right now? I know. It's going to be Mad Party. I hope you guys are ready to party. We've seen it before with Night March. Uh, Lost March is, was not that great, but they tried. And now, now Pokemon is trying something else out. They have Bunnelby. They have Pulti guys, Galarian, Mr. Rhyme, and Dedenne. So, as you can see here, Bunnelby will most of the time be your main attacker as well as Pulti guys. Uh, they can both attack for a twin energy. Uh, Pulti guys can also attack for a triple accelerated energy since it's an evolution Pokemon, but you smack 20 damage times the amount of Pokemon in your discard pile with the attack Mad Party. Right now, we have four of them. So, we have Bunnelby. We have Galarian, Mr. Rhyme, Pulti Guys, and the Danny. So in total, let us be honest, uh, you're probably going to be having like maybe three or four attackers which you're going to use. Maybe one prize. So that leaves us over with uh, like 11 Pokemon at this card. That's 220 damage. Is that going to be enough? That's already hitting the Zations though. So a one prizer being a easily being able to one shot an upgrade on Zations is good. We'll see how it brings. You also have a couple of types you can use. You can smack for Psychic Weakness and also Bunnelby, surprisingly enough. 
can use the powerful Carlos energy, I'll know, although that is going to be requiring multiple attachments. But other than that, uh, Mad Party uh, brings also consistency thanks to the T-Break ability of Pulti, guys. Uh, once during your turn, you may discard a Pokemon with Mad Party uh, as their attack name and then uh, draw two cards. So it's straight, but uh, very specific for Mad Party Pokemon. Blary, Mr. Rhyme, don't use that, just put it in the discard pile. Same for the Dene. Maybe in Expanded you can use Dimension Valley for the Dene, but in, uh, we're just a uh, standard focus channel. So I think Bunnelby is going to be the main attacker. I know you're weak against Spread, so uh, if you're up against like Salamence or whatever, be sure to run Mew as well to protect your bench. Otherwise, things could go wrong very quickly. You only have 40 HP, right? So that's that. I wonder if it's going to be good. Will it be better than Lost March? Let me know in the comment sections down below. Moving forward, we have Rose. This is a supporter which I think will boost a lot of VMAXs that were initially not playable. It uh, lets you choose up to two basic energy from your discard pile and uh, attach them to one of your VMAXs, then discard your hand. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> discard your hand, that's insane, but the, the way I see it is like VMAXs stay in play for like definitely one or two turns because they have so much HP. Definitely. Uh, but also the fact that sometimes you use this and take a huge KO, you take prize cards. So you at least have cards in the hand. If that doesn't matter, we also have a Rose Tower, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. But this will put uh, VMAXs that typically have worse, uh, like very bad uh, energy acceleration. Like let's say Stone Journer VMAX, Malamar VMAX, now suddenly become playable. You can just attach up the turn, use Rose, and out of nowhere you can use Malamar VMAX. It's no, no hassle with Electro, GX, and all that madness. Energy acceleration, every VMAX that is going to get released from now on on, we can say like, do we grab two rows? Do we put a Rose engine in here? Do we play Marsh Shadow in our list to get rid of stadium cards? Because, ta-da, Rose Tower is at the number six spot. I think this is very good. This is basically Oranguru from Sun and Moon's instruct ability in a stadium form. I know, I know, Kyle Xwell is the worst enemy for this kind of an archetype, but still, if you put this in your deck and you're playing Rose, you're obligated. You're just playing Rose Tower, that means you can uh, accelerate energies, you have no cards left in the hand, you can use Rose Tower to draw cards until you have three cards in the hand, and boom, you have suddenly you have a hand again. Then maybe you slap down a, a Acrobat V, drawing some more cards, maybe a Dene, you never know. So Rose Tower, very, very, very significant. Also, pairs really well with Rose, the supporter, and makes you reset stamp proof. In the past, people will say like, do I take the KO right now? I don't have a huge hand side. Well, the KO and then you reset stamp to one and you're like, ugh. Now you have some reset stamp protection. If you slap down Rose Tower, take the huge KO, you're not as weak to reset stamp anymore. Same goes for Marnie, uh, for that matter. I know they can overlap the stadium card any, uh, at any specific point in the game, but they will need the reset stamp and a stadium. So that's a combo they need in order to actually make you dead draw. And if they don't have it, well, tough luck. You just draw out of it with Rose Tower. Very, very nice stadium card. And uh, yeah, ha Rangaroo saw a bazillion amount of play. I know that was a Pokemon and uh, yeah, as uh, not being uh, overlapped too easily. They needed like gust it around or whatever. But Rose Tower, I definitely see some potential in it. Maybe you play like one Mars Shadow from Unbroken Bonds to get rid of the Chaotic Swell. Still slap down Rose Tower and then just go on the offensive. You never know, but I think drawing cards with a stadium card is busted. We've seen it before with Heat Factory. And uh, yeah, I know that just draws your three cards, but this will see play, mark, mark my words. Mo, yeah, here we are, Santiscarge V Max on the number five spot. Yeah, we already put, uh, of course, Heat, uh, Fire, Energy in here because that gives us an additional 20 HP. We have Welder, uh, the, the Santiscarge V, you may discard one energy from this Pokemon. If you do, choose one of the energy attached to one of your, uh, to your opponent's active and discard it. So you can, dis you can slow the opponent down. Let's say you're up against Dracopult, well, Touch of the turn, boss's orders, and uh, get rid of that energy. Same for uh, maybe uh, Eternatus V Max Dex. If they're a little bit on the slow side, if they're not relying on the Rose supporter, you can actually slow them down with that attack. You also smack 20 damage, by the way. Uh, all 184 4 is a little bit uh, uh, mediocre because Welder, even, even with Welder, that takes two turns to charge up. And, uh, yeah, other than that, the VMAX is where it's at. It has 320 HP. Having a Water Weakness is actually good. I don't expect Water Taps to uh, be insanely good, although... Labras, VMAX, Frostmod Dex might come out of the depths of uh, the bottom tables to uh, actually be very good since Picaram is going to be not tier 1 anymore. Besides that, it's a very good attacker, smacking 40 damage for 2 cards energy, so you can get this off in no time. This attack does 40 more damage for every fire energy attached to this Pokemon. So typically, you smack 40, 40, 40, that is going to be 120 damage as a bare minimum. Yeah. 
After the attack uh, damage is calculated and you smack the damage, you may attach a, a fire range from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So this stacks every single time. So every time Santi Score stays alive, the damage output gets increased more and more and more. Also, considering the fact you can accelerate um, with Welder and you can use Heat Factor, uh, he Heat Fire Energy to get more HP with Big Charm. This is going to be a huge, ginormous monster and uh, is going to get those one-hit KOs very, very easily at one point. If you can, if you are a dead drawing or a specific point, Sensei Scorch will roll, roll through you like a hurricane. It's insane. Like, let's say, for instance, we get Sensei Scorch on the second turn. Let's just go with Sensei Scorch, attach of the turn, pass. The following turn, we attach, we use Welder out of nowhere. We have four energies already and that is already... Yeah, 200 damage. Uh, yeah, count me in. 200 damage, and then afterwards you get an additional energy. That's going to be 240. The following turn, attach of the turn, 280. Welder and everything goes down. So as soon as you use this attack once, and if you survive, everything goes down. I'm a huge fan of Santa Score Vmax. If you haven't noticed already, I know you still need your welders, but every fire deck needs their welders, right? You can go to any Pokemon. It's good. Next up is Turbo Patch. Remember the days of Max Elixir, and you saw how broken that one was. This time around, they uh, nerfed it a little bit. Uh, flip a coin, if heads, choose a basic energy from your discard pile and attach it to one of your basic Pokemon. Excluding GXs, so the, you can still attach it to V Pokemon, you can still attach it to regular Pokemon, but no GXs. Otherwise, this would be busted. I would play this with, of course, ADP instantly. You just attach, turbo patch, boom. This also doesn't stay to the bench. You can attach and accelerate to the active Pokemon, so which is awesome. Uh, this reminds us of uh, like uh, energy acceleration cards. Like This ensures like um, some ar archetypes to be faster than before. If, let's say, you run four of these and at least two of them works. Uh, that's uh, how coin flips works. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you get four tails, but don't talk about that. You get energy acceleration at its best uh, from the discard pile to whatever basic Pokemon you uh, desire. So you can get attacks of way more quicker. Maybe play it with uh, the Santa Scorch. You get even more energies in play. So you, you just have to worry about you cannot accelerate to V Maxes, only to V Pokemon, basic Pokemon. It is. Also, this could help. Like attach uh, one of the one, two of these go. Well, you can suddenly attack uh, with a Pokemon. You say like this is a huge retreat uh, attack cost. I'm also thinking about certain Pokemon using twin energy and uh, a single energy that they need. So this is gonna be seen play, seen play. Mark my words. If we're seeing cards like um, flippy cards like Crushing Hammer see play, this will also see play. Mark my words. Like say like you can, you can get your Stone Joiner up in no time. Attach of the turn. Uh, it's your opponent's turn. Only one turbo patch needs to hit and then out of nowhere you'll be able to smack down these Eternatuses in no time. Number three, Decidueye. I know, I'm putting stage twos at the number three spot. What, something must be wrong with me, right? No, that's where you're wrong. Decidueye is busted. It has the effect, uh, the ability actually, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by the attacks uh, of your opponent's Pokemon V and Pokemon GXs. It only states prevents all damage, so it doesn't uh, prevent the effects, but still. Uh, with Hoopa, it stated like prevents all effects of attacks, including damage. Same goes for the Claudio Jax. And this is just a fan translation, it could still be otherwise. But still, blocking the damage is already good as it is. Zation V, you cannot touch it. So, certain decks just fall apart. Um, uh, by V Pokemon and GX. So GX based deck like Picaram, like using... Uh, only GX attackers and V Pokemon. Well, sorry, you cannot win against this. This is going to be one of those stall archetypes. Maybe you can attack with it. It does have, of course, niche attacks. It also comes back with Turfield Stadium to find your evolution and rare candy instantly. It's going to be an archetype for sure. And uh, you need an answer for it. If you don't have a, a non-V or a non-GX Pokemon, you're automatically going to lose. I imagine this like uh, maybe a 4-3-4 line of the a very thick line. And... Uh, you get all your Decidueyes out ASAP and then uh, yeah, suddenly the opponent has to go through 4 Decidueye that they can only hit with regular Pokemon. I know Baby Blast is going to have a field day with this kind of scenario, but other decks pretty much will have it hard. Then the number 2 spot and the number 1 spot, there's pretty self-explanatory. This set is all about darkness. Bam! On the number 2 spot I put Eternatus V Max. Yeah, this has an ability, it's a built-in sky field. Uh, if all of your Pokemon are darkness Pokemon, you may now have up to 8 uh, bench Pokemon, but they all have to be darkness Pokemon. When this ability no longer works, for instance, a Galarian Weezing is staring you in the face that the ability is shut down, well, you can discard until there are 5 left. So, what does this mean? You can fill up your bench and uh, you have more options. You can use Crobats as often as you like, your bench is uh, way more... 
uh, longer than your opponent. You can use Galarian Zigzagoons until your heart's content. And this uh, VMAX also comes back with Dread End, and that is an attack that dishes out 30 damage times the number of Darkness Pokemon you have in play, including a turn this VMAX. So, wow, that can slap, uh, let's say, 8. That's 270 damage, ladies and gentlemen. 9 Pokemon in play totally. 170, that automatically checks all the, the books uh, for like Tag Team GXs. Because we have Galarian Zigzagoon, we can even get a higher number output. We can use 4 Scoop Up Nets for Galarian Zigzagoon. And out of nowhere, this card is actually one-shotting anything in the game. And that's why it's uh, probably going to be the best deck in the format. You can play with so many different cards. You have an early Lethal Hoopa. You can use it with Rose to accelerate energies. You can then use Crobat, Rose Tower. Ah. Oh. Busted, busted. This is gonna be the chase card for sure for the new best uh, archetype in the game. The uh, regular Eternatus V also accelerates energy so you can slap 30 damage and then accelerate one darkness energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. So it has to come from the hand. Similar to uh, Oblivion Wing but from the hand. And then uh, Dy Dynamax Cannon, 120 damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon is a V Max, you smack 240. So yeah. This archetype will not only push out Dracapult uh, as a little bit as a tier 2 archetype right now. Dracapult's still very good, but if it sees this archetype, it automatically loses. And that's what you don't want. Losing Automatically losing against the most popular deck in format makes Dracapult all the way dropping to tier 2, maybe tier 2.5. We'll still have to check out the tier list afterwards uh, when all these uh, cards get released and uh, we make decks. But this is gonna be busted, mark my words. And then number 1, yay, you already guessed it already. Crobat V. The exact same ability as Shaman EX of Roaring Skies. You know how a chase card that was. I remember back in the days buying a Shaman EX for $50. Yeah, I know. I was that kind of person that didn't have Shaman EX and needed to go to a tournament. And it's like, oh, I need it. ASAP. And then the, the price stacks up crazy. Yeah. What's gonna happen with this card is like the new Dedenne. Let's say, uh, let's go to the future. And uh, out of nowhere, Dedenne GX is rotated. No. Well, that's where we grab the Crobat V. Consistency has always been king uh, in the TCG and uh, Crobat provides it. You just smack it on the bench, draw cards until you have six. This will also be put in uh, archetypes like, let's say, with stage two, that you don't want to discard your rare candies or your resources or whatever. Crobat V instantly going into every darkness deck in town that uses Pierce. Pierce can search it out while searching an energy. Then, of course, Eternus V Max will probably run two or maybe even three copies of the Crobat V. I think three copies. Three copies of Crobat V, four Galarian Zigzagoon, and a four four line of Eternus, maybe a four. Yeah, three three line of Eternus V Max, a Hoopa in there, and boom, you already have your Pokemon for your uh, next uh, top tier archetype. Anyhow, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video of me uh, talking about the top 20 best cards of Darkness in place. As mentioned, Mew V still hasn't been uh, revealed. I think it's gonna be a busted card as well, so maybe include it in this list as well in a certain order. Maybe pick up one of the cards that I mentioned, drop it out, and put Mew V in because I think it's gonna be good. Anyhow, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to mouse the like button as always, subscribe for more content. I will see you guys in the next video very shortly. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have an awesome time. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite card is and I'll be seeing you guys very shortly. Peace out.